our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. European scientists are preparing a new wave of telescopes to scan the tide of information emitted from deep space. All visible light is made up of electromagnetic waves, but go beyond the Earth and some of the most fascinating waves in the universe reveal themselves. Scientists are putting the final touches to a pair of European space telescopes designed to pick out parts of the spectrum invisible to the human eye. The Herschel Space Observatory will be the largest telescope ever launched. Its 3.5 meter main mirror is almost one and a half times larger than Hubble. And that will allow Herschel to produce images in detail never seen before. Using advanced instruments developed by the European Space Agency, Herschel will target starlight from part of the spectrum no previous telescope has been able to do. Herschel is a far infrared observatory and uh, it will enable us to learn many more things about how stars and planets and galaxies form than we know today. Herschel has a partner on its voyage, another telescope called Planck, but it is on a different mission. Planck will look at something even further away from the visible spectrum than infrared rays and much, much older. Its goal is to map out a picture of the young universe as it was about 14 billion years ago. Remnants of light first released by the Big Bang which created the universe still exist in the form of microwaves and that's what Planck's sensitive instruments are designed to detect. Its objective is to make uh, a picture of the whole sky. And this picture will be in a very special light, which is called the cosmic microwave background. And this light comes to us from the very first moments that the universe was born. And therefore it tells us a lot about the structure of our universe today. Planck is the Rolls-Royce of cosmic microwave background experiments. It is the the most sophisticated and the most ambitious of these experiments. Herschel and Planck are due to be launched early in 2009, blasting off together from Europe's spaceport at Kourou in French Guyana on an Ariane 5 rocket. As the program manager explains, marrying both telescopes on the same launch vehicle will be much more cost effective than deploying them in space one by one. I think Herschel and Planck will be just launched together out of economic reasons. They fly to exactly the same place, not exactly the same place, but to a similar orbit around the Lagrangian point behind the Earth, so they go far behind the Earth, about one and a half million kilometers away from the Earth, but they surround the same point, so it made just sense to fly them together. Two and a half hours after liftoff, the twins will separate and from that point on will operate independently of each other. This is a model of uh, how they will be placed on top of the rocket and as you can see they are essentially stacked one on top of the other. And uh, when they are launched, the uh, fairing, that is the part of the rocket that is around it, will drop off and then the first satellite, Herschel, will go on its, own, uh, on its own way, and then Planck finally will separate from the rocket. Their destination is L2, the second Lagrangian point, situated opposite the Sun, one and a half million kilometers from Earth. It's a perfect vantage point. Telescopes there will be sheltered from the heat of Earth's illuminated side and will avoid the pull of gravity. The Lagrangian point is one of these places in, the, in, in space where gravitational forces and, and rotational or centrifugal forces compensate each other. 
Herschel, the far infrared observatory with the large mirror, will follow commands from the Earth, focusing very precisely on objects both within our galaxy and outside it, as far as 10,000 million light years away. And because it sees far infrared electromagnetic waves, Herschel will be able to peer right through the clouds of gas and dust that obscure stars and planets as they form. It's something optical telescopes could never do. See exactly what happens when a star is born. When stars start to form in these clouds, initially they implode and they get a little bit warmer and warmer and finally uh, uh, the nuclear reactions will start and you will have a real star. But all of this happens inside the cloud. You cannot see it from the outside because the light, the, the heat which is emitted by the forming star cannot get out. With, in the long, with long infrared wavelengths, we can see this heat through the cloud. We can see inside the cloud, if you like. Visible light is collected by optical telescopes like Hubble. Herschel will look at the infrared. Next come the longer wavelengths of microwave radiation. Those are the frequencies the Planck Observatory is tuned to, squinting to see the first light released after the Big Bang, a ghost image of the young universe vital to the understanding of its origin, evolution and possibly its future. It is a light which was uh, emitted by uh, the plasma which existed about 300,000 years after the universe was born, after the, what people call the Big Bang. And uh, this light uh, comes to us essentially unimpeded. The tiny variations that can be detected in the microwave background radiation are the first seeds of the galactic structures seen in the universe today. Unlike Herschel, Planck will not look at specific objects. Instead, it will rotate continuously to build up a full map of the sky made up of microwave radiation. The whole telescope itself is rotating slowly around this axis, so it goes around like that. And as it rotates, basically, it sweeps around the sky and it collects light from a big circle around the sky. And uh, as um, time goes by, uh, the satellite essentially moves in an orbit around the sun. And so this big circle that it sweeps across the sky is also sweeping itself across the sky. After about six months, it will have covered the whole sky. And then we can make a, a picture. These new windows on the universe, one and a half million kilometers from Earth, will enable astronomers to view things in a different light, reason enough to celebrate the latest advances in European science.